hello guys welcome back to my channel again and uh, it's been a quite some time since i have uploaded a video on my channel due to my uh, some other engagement so i think it's been more than a year since i have uploaded so i thought maybe i'll upload a video on google earth engine so today in this video i'm gonna show you how to do a classification land you can say a crop classification basically i'll show you how to do a di classification differentiation between the two two or three major crops in a particular region so by the end of the video you will be you will be able to generate this kind of map using the sentinel 2 freely available data you can see the major two three crops we have uh, classified from the uh, sentinel imagery multi date uh, basically temporal sentinel imagery so we're going to use uh, over the madhya pradesh state of india and over the rabi season start from october and uh, ends in April or May, you can say so. I will use up to the March data. So, for doing this kind of classification, uh, you need some kind of uh, GT data, and means ground truth data. So, you need to train the algorithm. So, machine learning, we're going to use random forest. So, two, three kind of machine learning uh, algorithm is available in the uh, Google Earth Engine, like SVM is there, support vector machine, and random forest is there. So, we're going to use random forest you need some kind of ground truth data so as you can see on the screen uh, like we have some uh, ground locations having the like crop labels like wheat mustard and gram pulses so i have divided into the four classes like class one belongs to wheat class two is mustard and class three is pulses basically gram and lentil i have merged to class three as you can see here and and the other crop is class 4 so we're going to upload this uh, ground to data onto the earth in, uh, your earth engine asset and then we'll divide this training data into the uh, uh, basically the ground data into the training and the testing data set and then we'll uh, run the classification onto the platform so by the end of the video you should be able to do this kind of classification and of course in earth engine you can draw your own training set but if you're running over the large area so uh, drawing your ground truth data is not feasible so you should have some kind of ground truth data ground locations collected from the ground by visiting the field so uh, like if you are if you have a google earth account so you can simply go to the uh, like earthengine.google.com and you can go to the core editor directly so you can see my some of the earlier video how to register to the google earth engine and how to create an account and all so here this is my asset so what i'll do i'll just quickly upload the, that ground to data which i just shown you i will create new folder first let me just give a name let me just give gt test i'll just create a new folder so i'll upload the shape files into that folder so this is my folder so now i will upload there are options of TIFF file, shape file, and CSV file. So I'll upload the uh, shape file. Google Earth Engine do not accept this SBX extension file. So we will leave that file. And let me just give the folder name here. So it will go directly into the folder. So I have two shapers, one with the polygon and another with the uh, point. So I'll upload both the files. So as you can see under the task, it is ingesting into my uh, Earth Engine asset, uh, these files. So uh, uh, by the time it is uploading uh, the data, let me just, uh, so we'll, what we'll do, so we are running it over the Madhya Pradesh state. So we'll write, uh, we'll start writing the script. Uh, so first, first of all, we'll define our area of interest. So I have already uploaded the India shape file. So I'll just filter the Madhya Pradesh state out of it. So let me just, just give the variable ST. Picture collection. And I, I will quickly access the admin boundary, state boundary. So 
very quickly I just call, I'll copy the asset name so this is the whole uh, whole uh, India state boundary so what I'll do I just filter So based on the attribute, I will filter uh, the state of Madhya Pradesh. So the attribute name is feature state name. And we're going to filter Madhya Pradesh. So in our GT data, we have around uh, roughly 2500 GT points. So we'll divide 70, 30, 70% for the training and 30% for the uh, testing or validation you can say so now this is my area of interest so I'll just print it to see whether so okay so there's some problem in the spelling of feature collection let me just write it so now it's okay I think the feature collection so we are able to filter the based on this so it is showing the one feature so it is now we have filtered the uh, our data so now is our ground to data has also been ingested so if we go to this gt test folder and we'll, we'll just refresh it so as you can see so what we'll do we'll create where gt one variable called gt and similarly we'll just create a feature collection and we will simply just copy the ID of it here and we'll just paste it so now uh, this is all the points at one go so what we'll create we'll create a random column to divide it into a training and testing data set So now we have created the random column we have added the random column uh, column into the feature collection and now we will just divide it into us two data sets one called training and so what we'll do gt dot filter So what we're going to do basically less than 70% or 70% we are uh, making it for training and for validation we're going to, we are taking we can write validation and we'll make it just greater than 0 0.7 so if you print gt here and we'll print after that both training and validation as you can see total is 2629 and 1835 is for training and 794 it has taken for the validation so now we have uh, filtered the uh, ground to data into the training and validation. Now we'll start uh, you, uh, calling the satellite data which we're going to use. So we're going to use, so we'll create a collection. Create an image collection of Sentinel. And we're going to use so there are two products one is the top of atmospheric level i think level one level one c and there is level two a surface reflectance so we're going to use surface reflectance s2 underscore sr underscore harmonized the product we're going to use so you can always you can go here data set you can search the data set whatever you want to use like sentinel here so you can search the id for each and every data set like this one so from here you can get surface reflectance or toa 
so i am using this id only after that <coughs> so after that what we'll go we're going to do we're going to do we're going to filter based on the date so in in india uh, rabi season starts from october and it ends in for Madhya Pradesh, the wheat crop, majority of the crop got harvested by the end of the March. So we'll take data up to the March. So filter date will start. So what we'll do, every fortnight, we'll create a one composite. So from October 1st, fortnight. So every month, we'll have a two composite. So October, November, December, October, November, December, January, February, March. So we'll have 12 composite. And we'll then stack those and, we'll, and then we'll create the signature out of it. So we'll start to, um, suppose... To, to so we're this ground uh, truth data belongs to the past rabi season so i have created this uh, ground truth data for this tutorial only so to the past season so 10 to 0 so start from 1st of october so we'll create the 15 day composite So yes, and after that we'll filter the bounds also. So it will, it will do. It will only filter the data of this Madhya Pradesh state. So I'll use as we have defined ST here, like this. So now we have. Uh, so if I print this. So I will just make comment of all these. So we have already checked this. So you can see 263 images. It is filtering between these two dates. So like this, I will just give it the name collection 1. And after that, I will just start copying it. And I will create multiple collection. Like this is for October 2nd fortnight. I will just start from 16, 31. So like this, I'll keep on, I'll give the uh, different name collection too. Like this, I will create, I think 12 collection, uh, October, November, December, January, February, March. So 12 collection. So I'll just keep on copy and paste. So I one, two, three, four, five. Six. Seven. So I'll just copy these four again. So now I'll just edit the date. Collection 3, so this will be the 11th month November, and I will make it 1 to 15th November. And 16 to 30. Then I will make first fortnight. So every fortnight we are create, creating a composite and recreating a so we're gonna do a greenest pixel composite. So maximum NDVI composite. So to remove the cloud and to to get the crop signature. So like we have October, November, December. Now this will be our year two zero two three. Year two zero two three. Like this fifteen one, then sixteen. I just simply make it 2023 
zero one. So this is fine. Zero zero two is February. Zero one and fifteen. So I'll make it 28 because February has only 28 days. So finally, this is March. Now finally, March 2nd fortnight. We'll make it collection four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve. So we have also let me just we can save this also first. So I will save it in the save folder like GT test which we have created okay that is not a that is the asset so let me just save it directly uh, into that uh, my script without any folder so let me just mp test so now these are our 12 collections so now we will we'll write a function to create the ndvi because we, have, we need to do the greenest pixel composite so we'll create a function So in that so what we'll do basically in each collection in for every image like there are 263 images in the collection we'll create the ndvi and then it will do the quality mosaic function is there in the google engine so automatically it will do the greenest pixel composed for each of the collection so we'll do where image uh, we'll create an ndvi so image dot normalized so there is a function called normalized difference in earth engine so directly you can between i think band 8 is the nir and band 4 is the red and i will rename it to because you have to give the common name for that and after that we will return image and we will add the NDVI band to the existing collection to each of the image basically. So using this function, we are creating the NDVI and adding back to the image. Now we will run, we'll create the uh, basically greenest composite. So let me just start greenest one. I'll what I'll do. So I'll map it to the collection one collection one dot map simple so by mapping this it will calculate the idea for each of the images after that what i will do i'll just use the quality mosaic function and based on which because this this ndvi name we are using here it will take that band only and after that whatever band you want to select for the classification so what i will do i will just choose i think b2 b3 b4 b8 so blue green red and i yeah and we'll use so one so two also it depends on you what are the bands you want to use for the classification so i'm going to use these number of bands and after that i will clip it to my area of interest st which we have already defined here i'll just save it so like this this is for my first collection greenest image 
this is pixel composite so i will I'll just copy it 12 times again 3 4 5 6 7 8 12. now we have created the for each of the fortnite we have created the greenness pixel composite image now either you can use these images for classification or if you want to do you want to add the additional bands such as ndvi or ndwi or any kind of indices so you can create that also and you can add that band also so what i will do i will create ndvi also so it's very simple i'll just simply use this function and here i will use greenest because this greenest is the image and i will just give the name of ndvi1 so green ndvi1 is greenest one like this will uh, we can calculate the 12 and even you can use some other if you want to use some other kind of indices you can calculate that also So now we have created the 12 NDVIs also. After that, we can create the stack. So let me just create the stack of my images also and NDVI also. So I'll create the stacked images. I'll just give the name IMG and what I'll do, just simply create greenest one dot. Add bands, simple as that. So I have added the, all the images into the one stack. So even you can do like this also in the next line and I'm clipping it to my area of interest. So now this is my stack of all the images, uh, basically time series images. So we can, I can use either these images or I can create a stack of ndi also they'll create a new function and ndvi dot add simple ndvi2 
so I have to add comma here seven eight nine ten eleven and finally twelve so now So I have written the spelling of greenest wrong. So let me just cast off. No, it's fine. No. So now uh, we have created the two stacks. And finally, if you want to use NDVI plus band also, so you can create a final stack also. So now stack all is stack underscore img dot add band stack interface. So now we have created the stack of NDVI plus images. So it depends on you, whatever you want to use for the training your data, training your uh, machine learning algorithm. That depends on you. So now what we'll do. So we have taken the images and uh, we have. Uh, uh, we have divided the ground truth data into both uh, training and validation. Now we'll create the training areas. Basically, training uh, we'll create the training data set out because for those GTs we have to uh, it has to capture the uh, values, pixel values from the images, and then it has to train the uh, algorithm. So what we'll do? We'll simply create a variable called training. Now here, any of these stacks which you want to use, suppose I want to use stack all. Let me just give name stacked all. Here, dot, you have to do the sample regions. And here you have to give the collection name. So we will give it a training because those seventy percent of the uh, data set only we want to use for the training. And here you have to give the property name also. As you can see here in this file, as you can see, attribute is class. So one, two, three is there. So attribute name is class. So you have to define that also here. So here properties. So I will write class. So this it will use for labeling the data basically. So it will assign those pixels, those values to the particular class. And I think then you have to give the scale also. So like our data is 10 meter. So we'll do the at 10 meter because we are using Sentinel-2 data is 10 meter. So now this is our training data. After this, what we will do, we will train the classifier. So we'll create a new variable called classifier. And simply we'll just define ee dot classifier dot so whatever so here we will use uh, random forest number of trees so I'll just give it thousand you can give you can change this also and you can run the algorithm so it's the best result in how many number of trees you are getting the best result so more number of trees are there so more complex is the model. And after that dot train so you will train this using this training which you have sample region you have created then just you have to give the features and in feature you have to give this training variable because from the those gt data it has extracted the values the bandwise values for all the images and after that features and then you have to again give the class property and it is exactly same as a class which we have given, given earlier.
and there is one more variable which we have to define here uh, so it should be in a small i think yeah input properties but this is not needed right now because we want to use all the bands for the training but if you want to uh, basically if you want to restrict to some of the like you have created the whole stack but you want to use only some band for the training so you can give the name of those spe specific bands for the training so right now i'll just make it command because i want to use all the bands for training our algorithm so that's why i will not uh, i will make it a command so now this is our classifier so now so we have uh, we have sampled the region we have trained the classifier now we will create the output so uh, simple very simple now we have to simply which image you want to classify so we are training with stacked all so we will use this only stacked all dot classify and classifier we will give the name of the classifier which have which we have defined here like classifier simple as that now you can even clip it for your region of interest but here one uh, one more thing we want to do like these are the gt point of the crops but in the images there are other land use land cover classes are also like forest and all so either you you put the land use land cover mask to uh, mask the other area so what i'll do i'll just uh, copy uh, the land use land cover which we have like we are using the already esa mask is available european space agency, agency mask is available for the two years like 2020 and 2021 so we'll merge both of them uh, simply and we have created after merging this we have created one lulc here so even you can update you can use the update mask to mask out the other areas because those classes are not of our interest so otherwise if you don't mask out these you need to give training areas for those also so what we can do simple as that you can go to here and you can just create water bodies and all in urban areas so we can do that also classify now now we will add the classified image so what we'll do we'll add the classified image as well as some of the images to see the just uh, just to overlay our classified map over the images so i will add one of the image uh, so let me just go for march 2nd fortnight or first fortnight so let me just change it to first three so i will use this one collection 11 the greenest 11 i will use march first fortnight and after that i you have to define some kind of minimum maximum value for the image uh, let me just for 500 then you have to give them the for creating the composite you have to give bands also so we'll create the FCC, standard FCC, B8, B4, B3. And just we'll write the name, March, first FN. And after that, we'll add, simple as that, we will add the classified image over it. So this is our classified image. Uh, so there will be four classes to it uh, so what we can do we can remove the zero also so let me just make it self mask so it will ignore the zero values simple as that so one to four because we have categorized here master wheat as one mustard as two three is pulses and four is the other classes all the other crops and here instead of bands we have to give the palette and we have to give the color for each of the class so first class we will give yellow second class we will give 
blue and third class we will give red fourth class we will give cyan four different colors for four class and here we'll give the name of the classified simple as that uh, so there is let me just run it there is some problem in line 91 training stacked all sample region training okay so there is i think there's a problem with this class so here our uh, training done let us see what is the problem class is there okay and feature collection yeah class one is there so i don't know what is the problem let me just check again oh oh so i think we have to give class like this yes i think it may work now okay so there is a spelling mistake class pro property here now greenest lemon is not defined let me check greenest key spell the spelling of greenest is also wrong Agree and so yeah now i think it will work so it will add the image and then it will add the classified image both the things so there is one more thing can be done here so what one can do so here also suppose you want to draw some of the training area so you can draw over here also let me just show you i will create one other lulc kind of let me just give other name here and let me just create feature collection i will give the class so we have taken one two three four let me just give the properties same as class values five so i will create some of the uh, like water and urban so if any this see this LULC mask is also not 100% correct so some of the pixels <coughs> will be missed of this water forest and everything so we'll create some of the signatures and we'll add it to the existing training data set so that it will not in interfere with our the, the classification so i'll create like this is for water so like this you can even create signatures you can create the additional signatures also like this so you have collected some of the data from the ground but you can also ma always manually draw the like this is the uh, some kind of uh, barren land or so you can create these kind of signatures also and let me just create one of some kind of urban area here some of water so i'm just showing you how you can create even different signatures if you don't have gt also so you can create signatures suppose you want to do a simple land use land cover classification of urban water agriculture very broad classification so you can create signatures here only then you can do the classification so now we'll see how to merge these signatures here simple uh, what we will do here while training what will create a uh, training dot merge there are simple as that we'll create a new variable here no problem we'll create a new uh, variable card uh, let me just show you uh, let me just write training one training one 
training dot merge other so this is my training data set now so in here uh, here i what i will do okay so this training name cannot be same so i have to change that also let me just make it simple gt underscore train and let me just go for gt underscore validation that would be better so now here i will what i will give gt underscore training one and training so i'm merging the gt train uh, training gt with the additional polygons which we have drawn here and here we will give the name like this so now it will add these also onto my training so let it run the uh, let it run the classification what i will do for calculating the accuracies what we have to do basically uh, calculating the validation accuracy or training accuracy we have to uh, simply here we have to write two separate piece of code also for that also so how to do that we'll see so suppose training accuracy will be directly you can just simply write like train accuracy and simply just to write classifier dot uh, simply just call the confusion matrix directly it will create the confusion matrix for the training areas only so it will see whatever data you have used for training whether those are falling onto the classified output classified uh, how uh, output classified map but basically it will see in terms of percentage and it will create the proper uh, confusion matrix for that only for the training data and then validation we have to create the separate confusion matrix simply for that you can print uh, let me just write training error matrix and what we will write here train accuracy and after that if you want to see the in terms of per, so here it will print the error matrix confusion matrix and suppose you want to see the accuracy just write training Accuracy and simply you have to write train accuracy train accuracy. So it will give you a training accuracy. And now we want to test for these thirty percent of the samples. How much is our validation accuracy on those thirty percent? Ideally, training accuracy should be hundred percent. So now, simply, we'll create the new uh, variable called validation, and we will again classify. Uh, sorry, uh, sample sample region. On the valid whatever our validation uh, GT points are there, so we'll create the uh, will sample region those only simply collection. So here we will give the collection name of instead of uh, this GT training, we'll give the collection of GT validation. In those thirty percent of the point we will give here, and after that you have to just give the Proper is I just give the name of the class simple as that then you have to give the scale and this is 10 meter so now this is our validation and after that now we will do the classification using this create another variable validated and simple as that stat 
all dot classify classifier simple as that you have classified now and now it will give the uh, it will calculate the accuracy for the valid, uh, validation uh, data set so we'll create new test accuracy validated and you have to simply write the uh, whatever if you want to see the error matrix so simple just write error matrix and class classification that's it and now you want to print the accuracy also error matrix also and accuracy also And finally, we will print the validation accuracy also. So now we will print both. Let me just run it again. So there is some problem error matrix is not a function. Sorry, so here we have to write validation. Validation dot classifier now. I think it went yes. So I have uh, here you have to write the validation because only you have to classify those sample regions only. So now it will calculate the training error matrix, training accuracy, validation matrix, and validation accuracy, and also it will give you the classified image. So we'll see how this classification will see uh, it will it will take some time because it's a big area so it may take some time to run so as you can see here training accuracy is as i told you training accuracy should be 100 percent. so basically so whatever data you're using for the training so at least it should be classified to the the output should be classified to the same classes so our training accuracy is 100 percent. as you can see this is our error matrix so the diagonal elements perfectly five classes it is okay so now it will take some time to calculate the validation matrix and validation accuracy so we'll see how how much accuracy we we got in the validation data sets this 30 percent of our data set so i'll save it so like this you can uh, basically uh, if you don't have gt so you can create your gt data as i shown you here and there's also other way around you can even export the signature here whatever training data set you can export these training signatures so in, suppose you want to use these signatures for classifying the upcoming season or the previous season so ex exactly same data set same period data set you can use and you can use those signature for classifying so i'll show you that also so for that you, what you have to do uh, just you have to export the signature i'll show you how this training you have to simply export it to the table here this is the collection training so basically this training whatever training data set you are using so it will export the values of each of the band for each of the training uh, for each of the pixel or each of the training point or ground truth point it will calculate the excel file and you can export it and you can import it here and instead of uh, using this like creating the training data set directly you can put these instead of these features you can use these things i'll show you that also how to do that let me uh, let me just run this classification first after that i'll export the signature and i'll show you how to use this so sometimes what happened uh, this training data set if you try to run over large area so due to the memory constraints uh, like because this is the free account of the earth engine so due to the memory or computation constraint it will not run it will it will say okay computation value is too large kind of thing or memory exceeded kind of thing so what you can do in that case you can export these signatures and you can then you can run the uh, this your model random forest model on each district or 
or small small regions you can run as you can see now validation matrix has also been computed and your accuracy is 83 percent your training accuracy is 100 percent but your validation accuracy is 83.88 percent now it will load the classification also Uh, so now you can see it has classified into the five classes you can see we have given the cyan color to the fifth one so okay so it has taken the cyan color to the fifth, five, fifth class also because there are five classes but we have given only one two three four so it has uh, given so as you can see here the cyan color is going on to the some of the non agriculture classes so that's why we have created these signature that's why so for the fourth and fifth classes it has given the same color so ideally we have to write like this here uh, like this so now if i run it again so it will give the green color to it So now as you can see it is it has loaded uh, again so as you can see here it's a green color it is giving it to the five fifth class so which is non agriculture so it is falling on the non agriculture as you can see and this yellow one is basically i think it is wheat and the second one is the mustard so in the march you can see mustard got harvested but wheat is still standing here in this part so this is how you can uh, do the classification so it's a whole mp state so that's why it's taking too much time to load so so basically because you have a gt distributed over the whole state that's why you have to extract the uh, you have to run this algorithm of whole state so there is a way out suppose you want to run for i want to run for a particular district but you have a training situation of whole the whole of the state so what you can do here as i already told you here you can export this training data set so here suppose i will export this training so if i as i ran this again so as you can see in the task you will get the task for exporting this. You can export this and you can just give it any, any name. Be test. Let me just. You can either directly uh, save it to e, e asset. So directly it will come here, but sometimes it gives throw error because there is no geometry. We are, ex, we are not exporting any geometry. We are exporting only the signature, the, that basically the band values. So I'll export it into my Google Drive and then I will upload it here. So I'll just run it. So in a matter of I think in few seconds it will export this and then I will download it and I will import it here. So I'll show you how to run in the so using those signatures. So signature is from from whole of the state, but I will train the uh, algorithm uh, random forest using those signatures and I will apply it on a very small area. So even you can use this signature for the previous years or the coming years if you have the same exact same fortnight or same. Uh, time period of data if you are using then you can use that this as you can do as you can see so the uh, our the training data set were quite small that's why there may be some kind of uh, uh, classification errors also and also you can control this uh, classification so right now you're using um, simple classification mode so there are uh, different modes are also here if you go on the docs here and if you just classifier just type classifier here so you'll get set output mode so these are the modes so basically you can even get the probability of each of the class so you can use this mode dot multiple i'll show you that also so basically you can control the classification right now what it will do it will classify each and every pixel of the image it will assign either of the five classes to each uh, every every pixel of the image so uh, whatever probability uh, of classification is there so it will definitely assign that value but using this multi probability mode it will give you the instead of giving you the classification image it will give you the five different kind of bands you can say it will give you the probability between zero to one so it will give you five bands first band is for the first class second band is for second class and it will give you the each pixel will have the probability value so how much probability uh, is there to belong to that particular class so you can control 
based you can put some threshold okay more than 50 percent more than 0.5 only i will take that class so i'll i'll show you that also so for that uh first of all i'll just export this signature and I'll import it and then i'll show you the probability mode also so basically you can control some kind of classification right now uh, these are some of the pixel is going outside also so based on this uh, we are getting the accuracy of 83 percent uh, so now as you can see our training data set has been exported so i will download the uh, this it is in my drive so i will download this so i would have directly exported it to my asset also so now i will upload it again here so i think it got downloaded let me just yeah yeah so it got downloaded here so what i will do I will again upload that CSV here. Same folder I will upload. So instead of now every time uh, it will not extract this like sample region, it will directly I will put those signatures for here and I will I will run it on the very small area because now I have the signature from whole of the state. So now this is our classification as you can see the classification is okay you can see the blue color is the mustard which uh, got near harvest stage or got harvested and wheat is at peak in the uh, month of march so the classification is okay just given the green color to the other classes so now as you can see it is ingesting it so it may take uh, i think few seconds to import that, that signature file so yeah it got imported so i'll just refresh it so now this is the training mp test so i'll just click on this so it, it got imported here so name is table so directly what i will do i'll make a comment of it and We'll make a comment of it also and directly here feature i will use table so there is no extraction of the signatures now directly those signature i will use and i will make use it for a very small uh very small area like for here morena only so instead of state i will use it on the district boundary here and i will just use it on a small district so this is how you can run on a smaller area also using those signatures let me just write more on district and i will just comment this now if i run this so now let me just uh, again so now yeah if you are using signature then you have to give the input properties here the bands which you're gonna use so whatever i have downloaded here you have to give those uh, bands like you can see this is our signature file all the band values are there and you can see ndvi is also there so this class field is also there so what we have to do we have to give these names next year you want to use the same signature file but you want to use up to december or january so you can take those bands names only you can put you can put there so it will use up to that only for training training or algorithm so because you have to give the comma and everything so i'll copy paste here simply copy this replace with comma with this one replace all now i'll copy this and i'll input properties i'll put this so now these all are the bands you have to 
give here if you want to use the signatures instead of extracting every time so now this is the classification but now i i will again run it now for the smaller region using the signature file so now it is not extracting it is using the signature from this file so it may run pretty quickly i think as you can see now my area of interest will be pretty small so now this my region of interest is this only but the signature is uh, i have exported for the whole mp state and i've and classified only this part otherwise you may have very less number of gt in this district so uh, now it has done the validation but because validation is done for the very small part so that's why it's come 96 percent so basically for this particular district it is 96 the number of points will be i think very less so by the time it is loading uh, i'll show you one more thing like output mode which i talk which i talked about here so you can use the even set output mode so basically you can control this classification based on the probability also so what for that what you have to do in the classifier simple as that you have to type here dot set output mode and just here you have to write multi probability multi probability so now whatever input you are getting after this here after that you will not get this kind of classified image for creating the classified image from here what you have to do so now you can see your classification is also looking pretty good so <clears throat> after that what you have to do because you will have a probability for each class now each five bands so what uh, what we have to do now we have to simple as that so now if i add this classifier again using multi probability mode so i cannot give like one to five like this kind of thing just i have to write here ability and also you will not get the classification because you are not getting the one two three kind of classification now it will be the probability so now you can see this classification looks pretty good but now let us check again how our probability classification looks like if you use this one your, your training accuracy validation accuracy will, will it will not compute as you can see confusion matrix can only be called classified with mode classification because now it is not a classification it is a probability so it will not compute this accuracy is now in that mode as you can see this uh, the probability uh, classified image got loaded so as you can see you got the black and white image so black means zero probability near to zero and white means high probability so if you click anywhere suppose i'll click here it will give me the five probability values as you can see classified probability okay it may take some time yeah you can see so for zero one two three four so five classes are there so it is zero means one class one means two as you can see the probability of the first class is 88 percent at that pixel and for one class is two percent four two two like this so you're getting these kind of arrays so it's not a classified image but what you can do using those probabilities you can do the uh, basically thresholding kind of thing so it is 96 percent so somewhere it may be if you i'll put somewhere uh, on gray here suppose So what uh, we can do here after this, as you can see, fifty-seven percent. So now you can do some kind of thresholding. So we'll uh, we'll create a threshold of fifty percent for each of the classes. So now you, what you can do, you, you can leave out some of the pixels. So for those pixels where the probability is not greater than some, so there may be possibility each of the classes will have 30, 30, 30 percent. So you don't want to take those pixels into the classification because the, the probabilities of the, for the particular pixel is not that much high. So what you will do, we'll create after the classified here, we'll create, or suppose for V it is one class, first class, class one is equal to classified 
dot array get zero so zero is class one my zero is class one okay similarly i'll i'll just do it for all the other four or five classes so my fifth class is the uh, other land use land class land use land cover class so i will not, not take that i'll just make it mustard mus and i'll make it one and third one i'll take it pulses and two and fourth one is other classes other other any other crop so th and four so now i have i'm trying to access the probability values for each of the classes and after that i will create an, another image this is will be my uh, thematic image so i'll just classify it one So I'll just give e, e dot image zero and I'll put condition where simple as that uh, where wheat dot greater than equal to 50 0 0.5 then i'll make it the one class one and sim similarly i'll do for all the classes here second i'll do for mustard i'll make it two basically i'm thresholding so wherever the probability is greater than 50 percent for wheat i'll give it one wherever the probability of 0.5 for mustard i'll make it two then i'll use for pulses i'll make it three and i'll make it four or other OTH. and i will clip it st so now this is my so from those probabilities i have created the thematic class so some of the pixel will be left wherever the probability of 30 30 30 percent will be there so we'll leave those pixel after that i will add classified one so okay already i have here so what i will do i'll simply use this classified one instead of classified i write classified one one two four and i will remove this one and run it again so now we will have thematic classification also the spelling is not correct so we have two things class probability and classified also so in this case probability will not get this kind of accuracies because uh, it is not classifying it it is giving it is only giving some kind of uh, zero to one percentage kind of thing this is kind of fuzzy classification basically you can now you can control the classification where you are not confident you will not take that classification in the earlier one it it has to assign every pixel any one of the five classes but here that is not a case you have threshold you have put a threshold okay whenever the 50 percent and above uh, uh, probability is there you will take take that classification otherwise you will you will leave it so there are some several other modes are also there you can uh, like probability so it will give you the okay in case of probability whatever the output classification is there it will give you the probability at each pixel also 
even if 30% pixel uh, classification uh, probability is there, so it will give you that value also. So you can do the thresh thresholding using probability also. Now you can see here. So we have created the thematic output from the uh, multi probability classified output. You can see here. So it may have it may have left uh, many of the pixels also. So now you can your classification is looking more cleaner. So here and there a single pixel which are going uh, is not going here. You can see here. So it's classification is looking pretty good as you can see here. These are our mustard classes. And now uh, you have the signatures. Already you have imported the signature. Now if you have to simply change the area. So based on those signatures, it will classify. The, it, it may classify the other district also. So let me if I run for some other district like Harda. So actually it is quite slow uh, because we are running the multi-probability mode also. So, so even you can after that you can even export this output in a classified image also you can see uh, how to export it's a very simple function is there uh, let me just show you simple you have to use export image to drive so you can uh, export the image also let me just put this code also here and you can simply here give the classified one whatever you want to classify dot and you just make it unsigned 8 bit and you can give you can no need to create the folder you can simply write here p classification 2022 and here you can even give the uh, epsg code also so after that whenever you run you will in the task you will get the uh, for exporting the image also so this is the classification I, okay i'll run for as i have uh, change this to the Harda another district so I'll run it again so you'll see you can you get the output for class exporting the image also so you can run it here after that it will export this classification also let me just show you here and also one thing you can do uh, you can after that you can put here app dot Enter so it will basically zoom it to that particular area also. Like if I run it here, so it will zoom it to that particular area also. So now it it has started to exporting the image also, and it has loaded the classification also. So here you are getting the pulses crop also. It means the red color is of pulses as you can see here. You are getting the your red dead color is of pulses you can see here. So you are getting the pulses output also here. So dark red is basically wheat and so it has done the pretty good classification. So either of the mode you can use, either you can use let me just change this color because red is not looking good. So now you can see the green color also, but green color is also not looking that good. Yeah, magenta will be better, I think. So now you can see, uh, so it is, uh, it is, it is classifying it has done the classifying pretty good as you can see here the cyan color is going to some other classes so, and this magenta is going to basically the pulses kind of classes and yellow is wheat so it is i think classification seems good so either of the thing you can use either you can use the classification or either you can use uh, this one a multi probability mode so if you don't want to use multi probability it's very simple you can just here you can just make it comment and instead of this you can uh, simply you can make it comment 
and here you can directly use five and you can give some an another color here let's see one and here you can use the so no need to change i think only we have to just make it uncomment and you have to comment like this so just you can if you again run it so now it will it will run on the mode up classification board and it will compute the accuracies and everything also so as you can see your validation and training accuracy is 100% for this particular districts so all the points whatever was falling so it is okay so uh, using the probability mode is quite slow it may take time to load actually so only 12 or 7 okay very less number of gt points are there in this part so only 12 13 20, 20 and 7 19 points that's why your accuracy is uh, it's coming as 100 so as you can see the running the probability one is takes quite time but this classification mode is running i think okay uh, so what i will do basically i will share this link also for the code uh, so you can uh, either remove this input properties or then you have to make it you have to uncomment all these so either of things you can use i'll share the link of this script you can use but i will what i'll do i'll just uh, i will not share uh, the gt shape file but i will what i can do i can share the signature sets only the gt data i will not share the, the exact locations and everything i will not share so you can use this script basically you can use your own gt data you can replace the gt data and you can use other part of the script for your classification and you can change the dates and everything according to your season and all because this is basically crop classification but you, you you may have to do some kind of land use land cover classification so you can go here and you can draw uh draw draw your own signatures like urban very broad classification you want to do urban water forest agriculture those kind of classification also you can do so i think uh, that's it from this video guys and I'll in the future I'll try to upload more of the videos related to the Google Earth Engine, also some other stuff like of WebGIS and also. So now I'll I'll try to be more consistent uh, at least in a week or week or two. Uh, I'll try to upload one video, one video. So thank you guys, thanks for watching, and I hope this video will help you in um, like in your any any way like in your thesis work or any kind of professional work so i'll share this link in the description of this video also so thank you thanks a lot thanks for watching